Welcome to the show. Now, this Environment Week, I am talking to different scientists from across the entire city to bring you what you need to know and what is happening in the environment space. We, we know climate change is a huge issue. We know global warming is a huge issue as well. Now, we also know that water is also a big issue for us. The groundwater level in Bangalore has dramatically reduced over the past 10 to 20 years. So this morning, I've got Dr. TV Ramachandra, who is uh, a brilliant scientist from Bangalore City. He is the convener of the Environmental Information System at IISC itself. And uh, he's with us this morning to talk to us more about the water security. Good morning, uh, doctor. How are you doing this morning? Yeah, good morning. Doing well. The weather is uh, also you... good. Beautiful weather, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, okay. Now, water security in Bangalore, I think it's a huge issue as well. As I mentioned, the ground table is decreased dramatically, right? I live in Whitefield and uh, I live in the Borewell Road, actually. And the thing is, we don't use bore wells there anymore because it's empty. The bore well, the, it's, the water table is completely empty over there. So talk to me first about what is water security? Well, water security means if you are ensuring the required amount of water in the system, mm -hmm. that gives you the secured feeling, okay? You know, for that, you need to manage the system. You know, when you look at right. the water, there are two parts. One is supply side. Other one mm -hmm. is the demand side. You know, right. when most of the people talk about how to optimize the demand side, but we also should look at the, the, the supply side. For example, if you look at Bangalore, receives a rainfall of about 700 to 850 millimeter annually. And right, if right, you yeah. collect this rainwater, you know, we have 15 TMC of water. But what is the demand for Bangalore? It's about 18 TMC. That means 70% of the water required for Bangalorean are available in the form of rain. Now, mm. the best option is to catch rain. Mm -hmm. You know, when you do that, the rainwater harvesting, there are two methods. One is the rooftop harvesting. Individual houses yeah. can do. They will have additional four to five months uh, water in addition to the monsoon. While they also, if you do it through the lakes, you know, that's where lakes plays a prominent role. You know, you need yeah. to rejuvenate the lake, make sure the lakes are not polluted. When you rejuvenate the lake with a diesel tank, you are enhancing the, uh, the water storage capacity. In the process, you can store that 15 TMC. You know, another aspect of the water is that 18 TMC is required to the Bangalorean. When you use 18 TMC, you are also mm. generating the wastewater of 18 TMC. If you can treat that wastewater, you get 16 mm. TMC. That means 15 TMC plus 16 TMC of waste uh, treated wastewater, 31 TMC. You know, that is a surplus situation. And that is uh, available throughout uh, your, uh, the entire lifespan of any individual. So that is the sustainability we are looking for. And also when you get rain, you know, your catchment also should retain the rainwater. Now, right. you are not allowing the infiltration like the Bangalore landscape. Then mm. the water is not getting in. You know, that's where the bore wells are getting dry. You know, my study shows that when lakes were there, you know, people were getting the water at 100 feet. After removal of the lake, we noticed that water level going down to the uh, 400 to 500 feet. And today, wow. after 20 years, when I look at the same region, places like Nakshati Halli, people have gone deeper. You know, 1,900 mm. feet, there's no water. The same thing is happening in almost uh, all the places where only concretization has happened. You know, if you look at the, uh, the kind of uh, development that has happened, this is mm -hmm. a senseless development. We have concretized the entire landscape. You know, we are not allowing the water to percolate. When you do not allow the water to percolate, naturally your groundwater will uh, not have the water. So that's yeah. what is happening in your region, the white field, mm -hmm. electronic city or the, 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 the eastern part of the Bangalore and also the northern part of Bangalore. You know, we had mm -hmm. 1,452 water bodies in the Bangalore region way back in 1800. Today, the number has come down to 193. And now, when you look at most of the water bodies are filled with the sewage, untreated the sewage and industrial effluent, which is contaminating the, the water in the vicinity. So you how know, do we treat you, that water? How do we how do we uh, treat that sewage water? I mean, is that possible? Well, when you when you look it? at the treatment, you mm -hmm. know the there are three ways, uh, three stages in treatment: primary, mm -hmm. secondary, and tertiary. 
Primary okay. treatment will remove the large particle. Secondary yeah. treatment will remove the chemical ion. Tertiary treatment will remove the nutrients. Now, when you look okay. at the sewage that is generated at home, it has got large particle. It has the chemical ion and also the nutrient because we all mm. eat protein. The N gets into the system. Sarajanaka right. gets into the system. Similarly, we wash the cloth with detergent. That is where the P, phosphorus, get into the system. And uh, now, uh, when you look at the city, may have the distinction of having higher uh, number of treatment plants. Most of the treatment mm. plants were installed, but non-functional. Okay. okay. And most of them are secondary treatment plant. That means it removes the chemical ion, doesn't remove the nutrient. Now, if you want to remove the nutrient in a most economical way, the best option is the Jakur model. The way back in 2010, what we did at Jakur Lake. You know, 2005, if you look at my study shows the Jakur Lake water, as well as the surrounding, there were four, 25 borewells were there and mm -hmm. all of them had nitrate. Nitrate is a carcinogen, which introduces cancer. Now, right. how did nitrate got into the groundwater? Because we let the untreated sewage, which is containing N, into the, the surface water body, the Chakur Lake, as it moved toward the groundwater sources, naturally, the, 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 the oxidation has happened. That's how the nitrate formation has happened. What I did was I, inter, I introduced the constructed wetland and algal pond. These are based on the nature-based principle. When you look at the any marshy area, you have the species like Colocasia or a Kesa mm -hmm. or some of the grasses, which when it grows, it takes away the nutrient N and P. And also the, the algal pond will remove the large amount of phosphorus. Now, today, when you look at the Jakur Lake, you know, last 10 years, my students have monitored the Jakur Lake and the surrounding area. There are 300 wells are there. None mm -hmm. of them have the nitrate none of them have the phosphorus. So Brilliant. that means I have given the science to the society, which mm. gets the benefit of the clean water. That's what we need to do it. That's what we are trying to see whether this model can be replicated in the all parts of Bangalore of 193 lakes. How do we save the lakes and how do we restore the groundwater level in Bangalore by but, doing our own part? Is that possible from our own part? Yes, it is possible. It's not mm -hmm. too late. First and foremost thing is we have to push the administration to mm -hmm. stop the so-called development in Bangalore. What Bangalorean requires is a clean air and water. We are deprived of that. Oxygen in the city is mm -hmm. dipping, as so is the water. If these two right. are essential things are not there, then what is Bangalore with all the currencies in the pocket? See, that is where we need to decongest Bangalore. We need mm -hmm. to remove some of the major installations, shift it to the other uh, the towns. You know, depending right. on the resource availability, we should have set up the industry, not where the, the connectivity is there. We could have uh, improved the infrastructure to see that connectivities are there. Now, Mahatma Gandhiji talked about Surajya. You know, what is Surajya means? Decentralized development. You know, that is mm. where cluster-based developmental path we should have undertaken and we should have followed that so that, you know, every town, every village or cluster of villages would have got the benefit of development, making right. some cities or some urban pocket dense and suffer is not the right uh, the planning. Neither you will have water nor your children will have water. You need to wake up. That is the call I am giving to the youth of Bangalore so that if they wake up today, they will have a sustainable system for tomorrow for them and their children. Otherwise, they might have money in their pocket, but they will not have health. No All the money, they would spend it on the health. You know, if you mm -hmm. look, look at the implication of the contamination, for example, mm -hmm. Berandur, Vartur Lake, if you look at the fish in the lake and yeah. also surrounding area, people grow the vegetable. Mm -hmm. You know, we collected the vegetable, milk sample and the fish. And we found all of them have heavy metal. You know, heavy metal okay. in the food chain is a very serious pattern. You know, that increases the kidney failure and cancer in the region. Now, if you look at the kidney failure, which was 1 in 1 lakh about 10 or 12 years back, today mm -hmm. it has come to 1 in 5,000. It's quite worrying. You know, youth of the, uh, the youth are the asset of the nation. What are we giving to the youth? We are giving mobile and we are giving contaminated food which is not a sustainable option. The mm -hmm. children require health. You know, healthy youth will be an asset to the nation. 
I'm looking for a healthy youth in Bangalore. We are looking for it as well. Uh, so apart from rainwater harvesting you mentioned, what else can we do? Small steps that we as individuals, as people, uh, can just take so that we have a sustainable future, you know, maybe not wasting water, uh, you know, try and use, not buying water outside. What can we do? Well, you know, the every year, June 5th, we celebrate it as a World Environment World Day. Environment. Yes. And most of the people practice it as a ritual. Mm -hmm. That's an unfortunate thing. They conduct an environment day. Completely. Yes. Yeah, they conduct an environment day program for the whole mm -hmm. month with the plastic bottles, plastic cups, etc. Mm. That is not mm. environment day celebration. You know, we need to remove the plastic from our system. Right. Giving a bottled water to our children is a tragedy. Mm. And giving food to our children in polythene bags or a, the plastic boxes is again a tragic. You know, my study shows when you look at the water in the water bottle or the mm -hmm. food content which you got it in polythene or a plastic box, all of them mm -hmm. have dioxin. Dioxin is a carcinogen. You know, wow. that introduces cancer. That means right. every yeah, time yeah. when a child is given a bottle of water, thinking that it is a clean water, we are mm -hmm. creating a havoc. Not the havoc on the health of the child, but also creating the plastic waste, which takes millions of years to degrade. Not only that, because of the high temperature, you know, the plastic has the photo degradation. You know, mm -hmm. they a fragment into the smaller pieces. Those fragments, we call it as a microplastic that are getting into the fish and other marine element, uh, the organisms and other aquatic organisms. Now, again, that is getting back to the human's food. You know, the uh, recent study, which is published in Nature, shows that there are fish, uh, the, uh, the fish tissues having the microplastic and nanoplastic. Mm. This is quite worrying. Are we True. making the next uh, generation unhealthy population? You know, second thing is, it's a fancy for everyone to get the packed food. You know, mm. sit at home, we are too lazy, as you <laughs> rightly pointed out earlier. Your generation mm. is very lazy. So now, <laughs> they do not want to cook food. You know, they yeah, place yeah. an order through Swiggy or the Zomato or such thing. You know, when they get it online, you know, they also they, they are inviting the plastic. A lot mm. of wastage of the food, a lot of wastage of the solid waste happens in the process contamination get into our body. You are taking mm. food to leave, but you are inviting the unhealthy situation. You are ready to die with this unhealthy practice. You know, that is where right. the message, you know, the knowledge has to be given to the everyone, the implications. I'm not against the online marketing. I am mm. saying that we should have had alternatives, environmental friendly alternatives. Why should we go in for plastic boxes? Plastic. Yes. Why are not we uh, polythene bags? Can't we think about environmental friendly alternatives? There are many environmental friendly alternatives. Why cannot we think about that? And people should refuse. You know, when they refuse, naturally there is reduction in this kind of contaminants in the thing. Then if mm. there are some other things, then we can reuse or recycle it. You know, that is the practice. For all these things, people have to be responsible. People can be responsible only when they are sensible. People are, will be sensible only they know the environmental concepts. Okay? You have given us so much to think about this morning, Dr. Uh, Dr. Ramachandra. It's been a pleasure talking to you. You've uh, really, I think you have also done a huge part yourself today by telling us more about how we can be aware and making us aware. So I think you've definitely, that nine, that 3%, uh, you've definitely boosted that to around 15%, I would say now. Uh, thank you once again, Dr. Ramachandran. It's been a pleasure talking to you and uh, have a great day and uh, hope we all, you know, celebrate this Environment Week uh, responsibly and sustainably. Thank you so much. Have a nice day. Okay. Thank you. Namaskar.